Hello and welcome to Wagered on Tilt everyone, I am T, and in today's video we are going to be covering Z-scores. Now Z-scores sounds complicated or confusing and it's really not that bad. The formulas are simple and the logic is sound. It's essentially a great way to compare apples to oranges, and what you're doing is you're standardizing your data and trying to evaluate how far out something is from the average of your data sets. So if I were to compare information from maybe the 1920s baseball leagues versus today's current baseball leagues, and I just wanted to compare home runs, I could use a Z-score to see how well these players stood out in comparison. It's really hard to compare people between eras because there's a lot of differences in rules and technology and physical health and things like that. So a Z-score can help you out. So by using Z-scores, what's gonna happen is you're gonna create a nice little curve of information and then you have your average. The Z-score is a standardized measurement of how far to the right or how far to the left you actually are. And then by using that, you can compare and contrast different people, different players, different stats, and different results. It's a great way to, again, take information and standardize it and then be able to compare and evaluate for yourself who's really better, who has a higher likelihood of an outcome occurring, and things like that. There are a lot of models that we can take a look at here in the near future that use Z-scores for prediction models. We are gonna talk about how to use this Z-score within Microsoft Excel. That way you can start using it in some of your predictive models and analysis. So we're talking Z-scores right now, so let's take a look at this. So in this spreadsheet, right, a Z-score again is a great way to try and distinguish the difference between different players um, and their stats. And this could be against different teams, different players within different eras and things like that. So you can kind of start to see and shake things out to make sure that you can compare apples and oranges equally. A lot of people don't think that's possible, but thanks to a Z-score, you can get a rough estimate of really what those players are going to be like. So here we have player A and player A, this is their top 20 people within their league in their era. So we're just gonna say that maybe this was from 20 years ago, right? This player, this is their numbers compared to their other players that are in the league. So, you know, they're within the top 20. And then this is player B's league, right? Maybe this is within the last year or two. So there's an era difference between these two players. So these are the players from player A's era, and these are the players from player B's era. So if we're looking at these values, again, we're just gonna say points for now, just to make it simple. If player A scored 35 and player B scored 40, who's the better player? So if you just look at these numbers straight up, you could easily say, well, B got more, therefore B is better. However, again, you're not accounting for how they did against other players in their era or their season or whatever you're comparing against. So by looking at this just straight, you could be wrong. So in order to evaluate these things, we're gonna use the Z-score. So here is the Z-scores for these players. Now again, the Z-score measures against the mean. So this is gonna tell us how far to the right or how far to the left of the mean of the data that player is. So again, if you're looking at this information as, hey, these are players that are within the top 20 of their era, here's how many points they got, you can then compare them against their era. So the way this formula works is that you're gonna take the player's score that you're trying to evaluate, and then you're going to subtract the average from that data set that you had accrued, and then you're gonna divide it by that data set standard deviation, and that's gonna give you a value. So here, again, we have 2.98. Now, you would do the same thing for the other player or team or whatever you're comparing. Then looking at these scores, you would see who's further to the right or to the left. So looking at this information, player A is almost a full Z-score past player B. So that way you can see that, yes, though this player actually had less than player B, they actually stood out more in their era in which they played. So if you wanted to then compare them against this player within their own era, right, maybe you don't care about the eras anymore, right, what you would do is you go ahead and just swap this information out. I'm gonna take the average from here, and then I'm gonna take the standard deviation from here, so I'm gonna see how do these two Z-scores compare within the same era. So you can see now that this player is about 0.5 to 0.54 better than player A. So player B in comparison is a little bit better than player A, but if you were to look at them between their own eras, player A is almost a full Z-score better than player B, whereas here there's a, about a half a Z-score difference. So now you can really start gauging who's the actual better player. Right? So if we're taking this player into their current generation and bringing them forward, or if you wanted to compare taking one backward, right? you'd see how they'd stand out in different eras. 
But again, the point of the Z-score is to try and standardize the information that you have and get a better understanding of how these things are gonna shake out. So we're gonna take a look here real quick at these other formulas. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the font color. So in Microsoft Excel, you can do this without doing these manual formulas like this. You would do standardize. So you'd say equal standardize, and then E is the value that you're trying to evaluate. And then here you would put in the average of whatever number you're looking for. And then you would put in the standard deviation. Now in here, I put in average in the range, and then I did standard deviation in the range. But if you have those calculated out somewhere else in your spreadsheet, you would just reference them. That way you don't have to put the formulas in here. I put them in here so you can kind of see and understand what it's doing. So this is very similar to going ahead and writing out the other one, but this one's a little bit quicker and cleaner and it's easier to read so you don't get confused. So we can also then go ahead and unhide these. You can then also look at these z-scores. So here, this is evaluating how did this player compare in the league, in player A's league? How did this player do in player A's league? And here, and here, and here, and here. So you can kind of see how these players played and how well they did. So if you wanted to see how well they were compared to this player, so again, we know that this player actually got 2.98. So from looking at this, you can see that the almost three Z score is far superior to most of these other players. So they stand way above the crop and they are the best player in that era or season or division or whatever you're comparing. So this is a great tool to try and evaluate the way teams play against each other, to compare apples to oranges and try and standardize that information so that you can actually evaluate who really is better and who has a higher probability of a certain outcome. So that's it for me today. Again, the Z-score is pretty simplistic, right? It's a measurement to the right or the left of the mean of your data set. That way you can compare and contrast results and information. You can get a better understanding of what's really happening behind the scenes. Now again, you can build these into more complex models, or you can use these as just even a gut check when you're comparing evidence against one player or another. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to drop them in the comments down below. If you wanna reach me directly, you can reach me on X at Wagered on Tilt, or you can reach me in the unabated Discord as the T. If you felt this information was useful, helpful, interesting, or anything like that, or you like any of the other content I have, feel free to like and subscribe. That way you will get notified as soon as the next video is available. So other than that, that is it for me today. Until next time, happy wagering.